Hello, in this tutorial we're going to look at making fluffy sort of cotton wool like clouds. I originally created um, this kind of look for a trailer I guess for a little short film that I am currently still making called Isometropolis PD where we have this kind of aerial shot looking down on a kind of sunset and this candy floss like volumetric clouds. Um, so let's get started. Okay, I have a building already set out here. You can use this one um, if you wish on a, but I have the blend files available on a newly created Patreon as well as a whole host of other things as well. Should you wish to check that out, I'll leave it in, in a link in the description. Um, but of course you can create your own building and create, just follow these steps and you'll get a pretty similar effect. So we're gonna be using metaballs to create the clouds which has a, has an added advantage of staying pretty much um, non-destructive throughout. So here I have just shift clicked our cursor placement for the origin of our clouds and I'm gonna shift A, metaball, and then ball. And we don't see anything. Now if you ever come across this it's probably because you have either created them before or you've opened a scene file that has uh, so we just need to change the name, which changes the reference to the metaballs. I'm going to call it Fluff. And yay, our metaball has appeared. I'm just going to go to the metaball options here and up our resolution a little bit. And our influence threshold too. Actually, before we do that, let's go in and start adjusting things so we can see what that does. So I just tab in, we have two circles here, red and green. Red, I believe, is the radius, and green is the stiffness or how um, the how tight the transition is from metaball to metaball. So if we duplicate, uh, actually let's scale it down to get a more reasonable scale here. We duplicate it, like so, you can see these two metaballs. Now if we select just the green circles and hit scale, you can see what that does, but what we want to do even more than that is play with the influence threshold. And you can see that just gives like a tighter transition, which is kind of what we want because, you know, for that kind of bulbous look. All right, let's start positioning our clouds. Okay, looks good. Um, let's just up the resolution even more. And move on to the next step. Okay, we have our clouds modeled with metaballs and we can choose to go back and adjust those anytime we like, but I think this is pretty good to work with. So let's select them and create a new material. Just call this clouds one. And I'm gonna delete the principal shader. Just make sure we're on GPU compute in my case, cause that makes it faster. And we're gonna switch off overlays and fire up cycles. Cool, we don't really see that much, that's fine. What we need to do is add a principled volume. Like so. Plugging that into our volume node. Already looks pretty good. Let's just crank the density up. Cool, cool, cool. And we also want to take advantage of displacement. So let's plug that into displacement. While we're at it, we should check the settings under materials here and make sure displacement is set to displacement only as we don't want the sort of fake effect of it. We want the true displacement. And as you can see, already things are happening. Ooh. So let's drive the height of our displacement with some procedural textures. I'm going to load in a Voron Voronoi 
and let's just look and see what that looks like. But before we do, I'm just going to make sure that Node Wrangler is enabled. This will enable us to control shift click our Voronoi texture and see what we're working with. So for a displacement, you can probably see if I invert this, it's going to make some cool sort of blob, it's going to create a cool blobby effect. So let's plug this into our height. Perhaps a little extreme here. Let's add a math node. Change it from add to multiply. Now this has happened before and sometimes the surface doesn't get calculated unless there is something plugged into the surface input here. So I'm just going to add a transparent shader, making sure that's on white, plugging that into surface. Hey presto, it's back. I don't know if this is a bug or something, but if somebody else knows how to fix this, then let me know in the comments. So I'm going to turn down, just turn it down the power a bit. And I'm going to add a map range node. If you've ever used the color ramp, this is kind of similar, except you're only affecting the inputs and outputs. Uh, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to affect the output. So we're increasing the, the, the sort of the black output level. Yeah, that's, that's looking kind of cool. Just adjusting the overall scale here. Yeah, I think that's a good, it's starting to kind of look like um, soap, you know, like a frothy soap type material. So let's, we're using that for our displacement at the moment. Let's add in some sort of nice flaky bits. We're going to use a Musgrave texture for this. We're going to take our math node here, change it to add, as we will be adding these two together. Let's see what we're working with here. Let's give this a little bit more detail. Cool, you can see the displacement already happening. It's a little too much for my liking, so let us multiply that with a noise texture. See what that looks like. Cool. Let's grab another map range node, so if you want to crunch the, the output a little bit on that. Something like that could be good. Or that, even. So we're only going to add flaky bits to the white areas as this these two nodes now are effectively acting as a mask. So that's what we're getting. Not hugely visible, so I'm going to up the power even more. Okay, now we're seeing some kind of nice flaky bits popping out here and there. And a lot of it's just kind of tuning to taste, really. But that, that's getting quite good. Now we can use our displacement map here that we've created. We can use that as a density map as well. Let's just again increase the power of that quite a bit. Uh, take off clamp on this one because we want to go above the value of one. 
kind of feels like we want to make uh, a gamma adjustment here just so we can have more break up that sort of uniformity a little bit more Let's see what that looks like cool yeah I think that's looking pretty good so let's arrange our nodes here just to better understand what we've got and yeah thanks for watching i'll see you next time